Cindy Lauper built a musical empire thanks to a single rule that she followed her entire life, but all of it almost came to an end because of a severe illness. Did you know that her most iconic song was at first thought to be a dud? Cindy's entry into the music industry was rather unique. At first, she had no intentions of working as a solo singer. Instead, she was sold on the idea of being part of a group. She was the lead singer for the band Blue Angel, and despite working extremely hard, Cindy joked that the band managed only to sell 12 copies of their album. Her original intentions were to sign a record deal that included the whole band, but big execs at record labels had some other ideas. Part of the reason she originally did not want to be signed as a solo artist was because she saw how women were treated in the industry, and she didn't want to be told how to act, what to wear, or how to sing. When she finally accepted a solo singing contract, she fought hard to maintain creative control of her album. I didn't want to be like somebody else. I could only ever be second-rate somebody else, but I could be a first-rate me, and that is what I wanted. Record executives allowed her to keep her creative control, which led to one of the most played songs of all time, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. This tune skyrocketed her to stardom, but it wasn't as well received at first. She revealed that her hit song was actually not considered to be top 40 material. She was told in a letter from a head programmer that Girls Just Wanna Have Fun is not an album-oriented song. The letter continued and stated that the song would never make it and clearly wasn't top 40 material. The letter even bashed her singing, saying that she was singing way too high. Now clearly that head programmer did not know what he was talking about. Mega hits are a part of the reason why Cindy is so beloved. The other part is her commitment to helping better people's lives. She has made it her life mission to help those in need. Cindy is well known for her hard work as an activist in support of LGBTQ youth who are homeless. Her organization, True Colors United, helps to promote awareness about the unique challenges that LGBTQ youth face in society each day and how we can help them. One dollar from each ticket was earmarked for the Human Rights Campaign, which advocates equal rights for LGBTQ individuals. She has also been an LGBTQ rights supporter throughout her career, campaigning for equality through various charities and gay pride events around the world. Lopper stated that she became involved in a gay rights advocacy because her sister Ellen is a lesbian and because Lopper herself was passionate about equality. Lopper cites her sister Ellen as a role model. Her song Above the Clouds celebrates the memory of Matthew Shepard, a young gay man that was beaten to death in Wyoming. As a member of the Matthew Shepard Foundation board, she devoted a concert tour in 2005 to promoting the foundation's message. In 2022, Lopper launched the Girls Just Want to Have Fun Fundamental Rights Fund with a mission to support organizations fighting for the right to abortion and reproductive health care. One reason for her activism was her own struggles with homelessness. Cindy once hit rock bottom. Despite her incredible success, she remains very open about her humble beginnings and the fact that she was homeless for a time in her youth. After leaving an abusive household, Cindy was unable to sign a lease at 17 years old, and so she was homeless and living on the streets. She found her way to Vermont, living in a youth hostel while there, and she claims that it was Vermont that saved her. Cindy was reluctant to go on welfare, instead wanting to work at any job she could. She was eventually hired to work at a kennel. She also managed to complete her GED and enrolled in college to study art. But while she was in college, she realized that she didn't really want to be a teacher, but rather she wanted to be a painter. So she returned to New York and held jobs in the art industry before answering some ads to be a background singer. One of the jobs she worked at was a salesperson at Screaming Mimi's, an iconic vintage store located in New York City's Greenwich Village. While working there, she would often take payment in the form of used clothing rather than money. Given that Cindy was apparently taken by fashion at the time, it makes sense that she'd be okay with receiving previously owned clothes rather than a check that she could deposit at a bank. Although her life is much better now, one scary illness has caused her to rethink everything. You never know what a person is really going through behind closed doors. 
She is known for her upbeat, positive attitude, which is why many people would be surprised to learn that underneath her cheerful exterior, Cindy quietly battled an illness that left her feeling very alone. Cindy has psoriasis. Although the cause of psoriasis is unknown, it is believed to be linked to an immune system problem that speeds up the regeneration of skin cells. While it's often marked by painful or itchy patches of skin, the condition can lead to joint problems such as pain, swelling, or inability to perform daily tasks. This illness became so debilitating for her, partly because she developed the condition later in life, that her team, including her lawyer and manager, brought her to a meeting with the National Psoriasis Foundation, where she got to hear firsthand stories from other people who have suffered like her. This was an eye-opening experience for her, and Cindy became a supporter, using her voice to raise awareness about the condition. One person who helped her through her condition was her husband, and it wouldn't be the first time either. After splitting with her ex, Dave Wolf, after six and a half years of marriage, Cindy experienced a challenging time. She was feeling depressed. Luckily for her, she was about to meet the love of her life. While working on the film Off and Running, Cindy met David Thornton, and the two quickly became friends. She began sending Thornton little notes to tease him as her way of indicating that she was interested in getting to know him better. The friendship blossomed into a romantic relationship, and the couple were married on November 24, 1991, and are still happily married today. And speaking of happiness, what makes her feel alive is expressing her uniqueness, which often comes in the form of her iconic looks. One simple rule has shaped her entire life. If there is one thing that people think of when they envision Cindy, it is the colorful hairstyles that she has sported over the years, and these include everything from bright pink to aquamarine. She has always been praised for her ability to pull off any hairstyle effortlessly. Apparently, her inspiration comes from nature. She shared that the colors she rocked were inspired by the Madagascar periwinkles that she saw growing, which were a purple color, as well as soft white tulips, all combining to create a beautiful arrangement of color. Cindy has always been an out-of-the-box thinker. When asked what her secret was for staying relevant in the entertainment industry, her response was very simple. Don't listen meaning march to the beat of your own drum. That is often what's made her stand apart from other celebrities and singers over the years. While she may not have conformed to expectations, she always stood firm on what she believed in and what she wanted. She was never overly concerned about being or remaining famous. She believes that you can't live your whole life worrying about staying famous. If losing some fame means doing what you want, you gotta go with what you want. Clearly, Cindy has always remained true to herself and the goals that she wanted to achieve. She has never allowed industry people to pigeonhole her, which has allowed her to thrive and reach new heights over the years, including new heights regarding her bank account. Many ventures have led to her wealth. In 2012, the award-winning musical Kinky Boots premiered in Chicago and later appeared on Broadway. The musical featured lyrics and original compositions by Cindy. For her efforts, she won several awards for best score. The musical would go on to generate over $320 million on Broadway. And many of Cindy Lauper's albums have sold millions of units, earning her considerable sums. The 1983 album, She's So Unusual, sold over 16 million units worldwide. In 1986, she sold a further 7 million records after releasing the album True Colors. In 1994, 12 Deadly Sins helped her rake in more cash from over 6 million record sales. And in 2009, the album Floor Remixes helped Cindy sell over 1.35 million records. In February of 2024, Cindy sold her music catalog to Swedish investment company Pop House Entertainment Group. So after all of these and other deals has led her to a $50 million net worth. 